Welcome, in this video we're going to do a solo playthrough of Aquatica, simple diving with deep strategies. So for setup we'll get to the different things for solo mode. We're going to remove one side of the ocean character card with the circle symbol in the bottom right corner. So I'm going to head and chosen those, basically it's just the second copy of each of the cards. So this set is still going to be in there, so give that a shuffle. Then we're going to place one of these in each of these locations. So we've got the Mantis Leader, the Sneaky Eel, the Researcher, the Angler Fish, Diplomatic Crab, and the Grabber. Then the remaining three cards go there. Of course, down here is the purchase cost of each of those. We'll then shuffle the king card deck, draw three cards and choose one, placing the remaining in the box. So we've got all the king cards with that symbol. Give this a shuffle. Then we're going to get three cards and choose one to keep. So we've got Fancelot the Alluring. If you gain this Lord, we gain one of those Mantas, then place Fancelot into the box. Sander the Usurper. It's going to let us raise a location, grab a card back from the discard pile, unflip a Manta, and then get some treasure from our location. And Saul the Great, unflip all Mantas, scout, and play a character card. And I think I'm going to go with Sander the Usurper. We'll follow the rest of the standard rules for setup and player setup for herself. So we'll take the location stack, shuffle it, then we're going to set six locations out. And they're going to have how much fight it takes to get, how much money, victory points, some special effects we might get. We're going to get a mana at the end and the type of location. So setting six of those out. I am covering up some of the board here just so I can Zoom in just a little bit more. Got all the mantas off to the side. And there are some advanced goals. I'm just going to go with the basics on the board. So this is we have to have eight characters in our hand to get that goal. Of course, all the goals are going to be eight for first place, five for next place. And so we're going to get one of those two. And we start the game with seven have five locations on our board, have three of our locations scored for treasure, and have two wild mantas. For our player, we've got our board here. We've figured that out, chosen one of the symbols. We're gonna take those six card starting cards along with our king and our four trained mantas. This is gonna give us two fight at that type of location allows us to raise one of our locations one space, plus one money, plus one fight. Then we will take a set of trained manas and give them to our virtual player. So I've got those set off up here. And how to play, play the game following the standard rules. However, every time you play the Matrona card or do the scout action, you must place one of the mantas on one of the goal tracks. Um, we may place it on any goal track you wish. It does not already have one of the mantas there. For the end of the game, once all the mantas have been placed, take one more turn and then the game ends. Counter prosperity points, and depending on how many points we get, it's going to show us how bad of a monster we are in this game. Now, the game can still end by the normal ways. So if we accomplish four goals, the location deck runs out, which will not happen. More likely the ocean character deck is gonna run out because there's only three cards in there. And whenever we play this card, we are technically a two player game, us versus our virtual opponent. So we discard the leftmost character in the ocean every time we play this card. So we have a very limited amount of turns here. So we're going to start off turn one with the Legionnaire, gaining three attack and conquer one location. So our turns is we get to play one card from our hand, that's our main action. 
and we can follow up with as many effects as we have, whether it's using cards we'll potentially get or flipping our manas for some bonuses. So we're gonna take ourselves up to four fight, flipping that over. Which will be enough to get us this location. So it's going to potentially give us plus two fight and plus two money, high victory points, and that's just the type of space it is. So we'll slide that in there. And as we use up those abilities, we'll cover them up. Then once we get them down to this point, we can score them. But they're not scored until we play a card to do that. We're going to go ahead and play our seahorse to scout. That means we can move up to four of these locations up top. The one that doesn't make the cut is going to get discarded. All these are going to be minus one fight. Six more locations come out. Since we scouted, one of these is going to score. And we'll just put it right there. So that's just blocking us from getting the eight victory points. We do get one fight to put towards conquering a location. And this is going to cost us two. We're going to end up getting three fight at that type of location there. So we'll spin that. It's going to give us plus two money, a blank space, and then another plus two money. Actually, I forgot we got another plus two fight down here. We can probably get something better. So we've got a potential of one, two, three, four. Oops, that's the one we used. No, I'm still good with doing it that way. But I will keep that. We'll use the two fight from here to get that same card. Then we're going to use the Sea Lord to gain a money and buy a location. So we're gonna use that for two money and another two money. So we got a total of five. Yep, we're gonna need it all. That will get us this one. And what this does lets us rise up either two locations, one space, or one location, two, and we can't use it on itself. Then we're gonna use Xander. So it can raise up one of our locations. Then get a card from our discard pile back, which I think is going to be our Legionnaire. Actually, no. We'll get the Sea Lord. Unflip one Manta. And then we can score one of our cards. So we'll take it out of this spot and put it up here in our scored pile. Then we're gonna use our Sea Lord again to gain a money and buy a location. So one, two, three money, which we will use for this location. We're gonna use our Wave Teller to move Arise two spaces, so one, two. Use that to score a card. Then use that to move this on up. Then use this ability to get a card back, which is gonna be your Sea Lord again. Yes. Then we'll play the Sea Lord again, gaining a money, buying a location. So we'll use this to get us up to three money to grab this one. And I'm going to choose not to recruit a character with that. So this is our last card. Allows us to get all our cards back. We unflip all our mantas, but they're already unflipped. Actually, no, let me just take that back. We're not going to play that yet. We will play this to recruit a character. 
So that is one of our goals. So we're gonna give ourselves three money. Four money. To purchase the Diplomatic Crab. Which will move this down, revealing the turtle, turtle the treasure. Oh yes, and when this went all the way up, we get a manta with that symbol. Then we're going to gain the money, which we can use to recruit one character or buy one location. And we are going to, this is the only place we can buy. And that just comes in, it's going to give us a straight victory point, maybe. Now we're going to go in with our Matrana card, which gets all our cards back to our hand. Unflip all our Mantas. And we're going to discard the leftmost character in the ocean. Which brings all these down. Revealing the Meg. So if we do have eight cards in hand, and I believe we can score this first. So we take one of our cards over here, or one of our Mantas, score it. And then since we played that, we can move that on up also. So we're ready for our next turn or round. I'm going to play our Legionnaire to gain three attack and to conquer one location. Um, before we do that, sorry, we are going to move one of our locations up. Then play that so we can use this for three fight. Getting us up to six. This is one cheaper. So we'll go ahead and bank that, which is going to be five locations in our board, which I believe we're going to use this one because that's one of our goals. And we'll play the Sea Lord, gaining a money to buy a location. So we'll go up to four money. Allowing us to get this one. Oops, no, we won't. Take that back a step. We need to use the Wave Teller first so we can score two of our cards. So that one's eight victory points. And that one's four. Now we've got room to put him. One money, buy a location, that gets us up to four. We're gonna grab this one and immediately use that to move another location up two spaces. Which gets that to the end, which gets us a mana with two coins. This means we have two mantas. So we will place that up here. And at any time, we can spend for that, so we don't have to do it right now. So we spent that. Now we can score another treasure. That one's worth seven. Use that to score another treasure. This one's worth four. Use our crab to gain a money, recruit a character, or buy a location. We'll take us up to three money. And go pick up this area. Then use the Usurper to raise one of our cards, get a card back. Let's see. I think we're gonna go for our Fighter. Unflip one of our Mantas. We'll go for the money one and then score a card. Then we will play this 
inning three fight, conquer location. Grabbing this one, immediately use it to score one of our cards. And I'm going to use this ability to rise another one up two spaces. So slight mishap. Camera quit recording, so I had to reset and go back, which was kind of easy to do. So we're going to end the game here or get next to it. So we're going to use this, return all our cards to our hand, unflip all our mantas, discard down here, which moves everything over. So this deck is empty, which triggers we have one more turn left. We'll also place another Manta up here. And for our, our last turn, we're going to declare we have three or more treasures. Play the Wave Teller to score two treasures. And that's our turn. So for scoring, we get one prosperity point for each character card in your hand, including your king, not counting those in your discard pile. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we get points for our goal tracks. So we're going to go to 15, 20, 28, and 36. And lastly, our points in our location scoring pile. So in here, see if we can find some easy math. Seven and three makes 10. Two fives make 10. Then six and four, well, three, three and four make 10. So 10, 20, 30, 38, 42, 43. So our 43 and 36 means we scored 79 prosperity points, which means we are the Leviathan. And that's the basics of how to play Aquatica in solo mode. So with that, some final thoughts on the game. For solo play, I mean, it's something quick to play, not something I'd really be picking up on. But as far as components of this game, I mean, good card, quality stock. This thing is pretty awesome the way it works with sliding your cards up. The manas are great, but I think the game probably shines multiplayer. So the goals on the board are fairly simple. So once you play it a game or two, you'll probably want to go with the additional goals to spice it up some. So great looking game, good components, easy to play, easy to teach. As always, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.